Uh, hi guys, uh, Michael here again. Um, not something that's been specifically requested, but uh, Mark and I thought it might be interesting um, just to talk about shoes, basically. Um, uh, so I'll do this in two parts. First one, I'll talk about uh, my shoes and why I've got what I've got um, and sort of the rationale behind what I'm running in. Um, and then part two, I'll uh, go up to the shop and um, record something about um, basically things to look out for when you're buying your shoes because um, it is important to get it right. Um, having the right pairs of shoes on makes a big difference in terms of staying healthy um, and some of them do do help you run a bit quicker as well so that's always worth worth looking at. Um, yeah. Right so here we go so this is my shoe cupboard. This has the majority of my shoes. There's a few more trail shoes and stuff hanging around. Um, but so generally my shoes sort of fall into three categories. Um, there's daily trainers, uh, which just do easy runs on the road or grass or whatever it may be. Um, trail shoes, these bad boys, I've got three pairs of those, um, that are for running off road and then, uh, flats for sessions and races. So these guys and those guys, uh, oh, and then there's one other thing to consider. I've got recovery shoes. So like recovery flip-flops and stuff like that, which are pretty good uh, for your arches. So I'll start with my daily trainers. Um, so I've got sort of four pairs on the go at the moment. Um, so these, this is the Hoka Clifton 7. Um, pretty good daily trainer. I've had six pairs of Cliftons now. Um, and yeah, just lightweight pretty good uh does the job these have done about 300 miles i think and so starting to get a bit of wear on them um pretty low drop oh, one thing i should mention is i am a neutral runner so i don't need any functional support um next one this is the topo ultra fly um slightly wider shoe good if you've got short fat feet um and yeah just to get a neutral trainer five mil drop so when I talk about drop, that is the difference between your the height your heel is at and the height your forefoot is at. So this is a five mil drop shoe. The Cliftons are the same. So that means your heel is five millimeters higher than your forefoot. And these have done again about 300 miles or so. Um, and these have got a little bit of support in them. So this black, this harder black unit around the back here and this red bit here is um, a bit of support just to help with any sort of like pronation and stuff that's going on. Um, another pair on the go. These are quite new. This is, again, Car this is the Carhu Fusion. Uh, Carhu are a relatively small brand in the UK, but uh, they make some nice shoes. So that's these bad boys. They're quite new. I've only done about 60 miles in those. Again, I tend to like quite high stack shoes, um, so quite a lot of cushioning, but relatively low drops. Um, yeah. So speaking of low drop, next ones, these are another daily trainer. This is the Ultra Torin. Again, another one slightly wider in the forefoot. Uh, so you can see it tapers up. Um, and this is this is a zero drop shoe. Um, so I don't tend to wear these too much because they make my Achilles work a little bit harder, but they're good for a bit of variability. Um, like having a shorter recovery gun on the grass, just change on the stimulus on the foot. Um, yeah so that's the bulk of my daily trainers and then this is my long run shoe of choice at the moment the on cloud flyer this is technically a support shoe but it works fine for neutral runners um so on a bit different swiss um got these pods on the bottom and that is their way of doing cushioning um it replaces a traditional eva midsole um yeah so that's that one uh trail shoes won't worry too much about those, but um, if you're running around Tunbridge uh, or just using them for long runs and stuff like that, trail shoes fall into two categories. Um, there's hybrids, so like road to trail, which is this. This is the Saucony Peregrine, specifically the ST model, which stands for sloppy terrain, so it's slightly more aggressive. Um, and basically what, what a hybrid shoe is, is it has a decent amount of cushioning. So this has got quite a lot of cushioning for a trail shoe. So it can survive little stretches on the road. Um, 
which whereas something like a, an out and out innovate um which has got quite big lugs um wouldn't be as comfy on the road uh, but would probably be better if you were going bog snorkeling or fell running up in the peaks um so yeah right so that pretty much covers my easy running shoes um the next type of shoes i'll talk through is my flats uh, i've got about four or five pairs on the go at the moment again um start with this one i'll go in sort of like speed order so this is the Saucony Kinvara, just light, pretty basic shoe, um, just a nice shoe. This is the Kinvara 11, um, just yeah, light, bit of foam, really good for grass sessions, so down at Vizards or on the uh, school playing fields and stuff like that. Um, not much rubber on the bottom, so they do have a habit of getting chewed through a lot, but a nice light shoe. Next one, moving to the first of my plated shoes. So this is the Saucony Endorphin Speed. Um, this These go for about 150 quid. So this is a mid-range racing slash training shoe. And you can just see it's just starting to crease a bit at the forefoot. Done about 250 miles, which is pretty good for a pair of flats, to be fair. Um, so this is... I'll put it down here so you can see it a bit better. So this is one of... Uh, so it's a plated shoe, so it's got a nylon plate in it. And the idea behind the plated shoes is basically you land at the heel, which loads the plate up because these this high stack foam compresses. And then when you roll forward, it basically pops you up onto your toes. So lots of shoes are looking at this way of moving you through the gait cycle quicker. Um, so this is one way that people are doing it with plates. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, the speed. It's a little bit heavier than the racing version. Um, good for long reps on the road, uh, like around Denby Drive and Stacey Road and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, and then above that is the Saucony Endorphin Pro. This is the Pro. This is a £190 shoe, um, which is on the cheaper end of the plated shoes. Um, things like the Vaporflies, the Vaporfly 2 is 210 quid. The new ASIC shoe is about the same, about 210. Um, so this has got a full carbon plate uh, that basically runs, so on this, this black bit here, there's a plate that runs through there. And again, it's a similar idea, carbon plate, loads it up, springs you forward. Um, so yeah, so that's the Endorphin Pro, nice shoe. Um, I don't, I basically, I've used this about three or four times because I want it to last for racing and stuff. Um, and then I've always been someone who likes doing their sessions in like track sessions and stuff in slightly lower stack flats because i find the high stack flats get a bit unwieldy so like, the speed is lovely until you get down to about 32 second 200s in which case it gets a bit unwieldy so i've um these are my new new ones i've not tried these yet this is the saucony type type a um so just super light not much to it pretty simple basic but basic pretty standard uh, flat um so i'll do like track sessions and stuff in these when i don't want to put my spikes on um not tried them yet we'll see how they go um those are replacing my old new balance hanzos which are down here these are done pretty well i did a lot of like 5ks on the track in these but the you can see the bottom is is pretty much polished smooth so um yeah they are nearing the end of their life um and then after that spikes cross-country spikes don't need to say too much about those just Find a pair that's comfy for you, does the job. Um, then lots of brands have got them. And build quality as well. Look at something that's not going to fall apart in five seconds. Um, on the track, I have sort of two two sets of spikes. These ones, Hoka pair of spikes. These are the Hoka Evo R's. Uh, I had these a couple of years now. They're starting to go get a bit shredded. But these are basically my training spikes. So I will, I'll do training sessions and stuff in those because um, there's just a little bit more shoe there to protect them. Um, and then for out and out track racing, um, I've got another pair of, I've got some Mamba 5s, which are just super lightweight Nike racing spikes, um, that do the job. So yeah, so that is my shoe cupboard. So just to conclude, um, I have a lot of shoes. So if I was to simplify it down, um, and say I only have three, I'd say go for something like this, some sort of setup of, um, so daily trainer. Something that is a bit heavier, 
lots of cushioning, can take the miles and you're not going to get hurt doing it. Something to do, so in this case the Clifton, I mean, I like the Clifton, so um, not much more to say there. Something for up-tempo stuff, um, so long sessions, so I'd pick the speed. I think if I could only have one shoe at the moment, it would be the Endorphin Speed. I think it's probably the best shoe on the market at the moment, but that's just my opinion. Um, just a super, super shoe. And then something flat, short, 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 nice, lightweight pair of flats, something to run fast in. And um, yeah, that would be my three three shoe setup. And that's, that's something that's pretty doable without going mad. Um, three shoes. I mean, I've got probably too many shoes. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, I hope people have found that interesting. I will um, try and get up to the shop. And if I get a free minute, record uh, a bit about the difference between support shoes and neutral shoes and things to consider, um, what brands are generally pretty good, um, and then talk about where where to buy your shoes. Um, uh, yeah, so I hope that's been interesting. Cheers. See you.